Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. So we are back. Barcelona is going to be playing in about 24 hours or maybe even 12 hours depending on where you guys are located. But yes, Barcelona are going to be facing Elche and they will be away. But this is not what I really want to talk about in this video. I do want to just mainly talk about Lionel Messi and his potential return. It's just, you know, my body's, my body's asking for it. I have to talk about this. I do get excited because I know that there's a lot of hype going on around this move. So I'm just going to slightly talk about the Elche versus Barcelona game and then talk about Lionel Messi. Everything is going to be organized on the timeline down below. If you guys are new here, welcome to this Barcelona family. I'm happy that you guys are here. If you also do want to support this YouTube channel, please subscribe to the channel and also like this video. I would greatly appreciate it. So like I've said, there's going to be a lot of great games coming out this weekend. We will be seeing Barcelona, of course. We're all going to be following that. And then there's there's also going to be Liverpool versus Manchester City, Dortmund versus Bayern, a lot of classical type of matches. But focusing on Barcelona, if we look at the squad list here, we can see that Araujo is going to be available for for this match no i don't believe that he will be participating at all there's just no way chavi hernandez is going to be risking him like one game before we do face real madrid in that semi-final match it's going to be very important so i just don't think that Arojo is going to be playing ansu Fati could be starting because there has been so many reports about ansu Fati starting with ferran torres mainly because we don't have a lot of players available for that front three rafinha is suspended dembele is also still injured and so i do believe that ansu Fati will be starting and especially with you know the father saying all of these things about how he thinks it's on fair for Ansu Fati to not see minutes. He believes that, you know, the number 10 of Barcelona should be on the field and that people should not be hating on Ansu Fati and all of these things, right? There were some tensions. And so all of this does accumulate towards Ansu Fati maybe trying to prove a point in this match against Elche. But overall, I do want to see something very different. I want to see different things. Like, for example, could we see maybe Eric Garcia acting as a pivot for this match? Maybe standing right next to Frankie de Jong. We talked about this earlier in this week, how Xavi Hernandez was so impressed with Eric Garcia playing as a pivot so could we see that again another thing that we could also see is Ansu Fati on the left and Ferran Torres on the right side with Lewandowski as the striker and maybe our back line could be Sergio Roberto as the right back Eric Garcia and Marcos Alonso as a center back duo that's probably what we're most likely going to be seeing if Eric Garcia is not a pivot and then we're going to be having Alejandro Balde on the left back position again I want to rest a lot of players I don't want I don't really want to see Kunde, even though I know that he will be available I don't really want to see a lot of Frankie de Jong nor even Gavi because I want these players rested and also I don't really want to see a lot of Jules Kunde or again like I've said Ronald Araujo I want these players to be rested for the upcoming game and overall I do believe that Barcelona will get the job done regardless of whatever that starting 11 will be so going into the biggest point of today and that is going to be about Lionel Messi and I want to talk about this because it says here according to Fernando Polo that Xavi is considering using Messi as a playmaker in the fourth midfielder role the club is planning next season with him in the squad and if not the plan is already done they have a set plan in place for next season that does include Messi. His return is a very real option now. So I want to remind everybody here on what happened today. And Fabrizio Romano has also stated that internally within the club, behind the scenes, Xavi is really pushing hard to bring back Messi. He is obsessed. And so the fact that we're seeing Xavi Hernandez wanting Messi to return, these players also agreeing that they want to see Messi back at the Camp Nou. And we even have Rafa Juste who has spoken out earlier today, who is the third most important voice in the club. Right next to Mateo Leman and John Laporta, he has also confirmed that he has contacted Messi's camp and we also know that Messi wants to come back to Barcelona and he's desperately trying to get that return and even play for free obviously we can't have any players play for free at a club but he's basically trying to say I'll come here no matter what I don't care if you pay me one euro a season this is just so destined to happen and I think that with us knowing now that the uh, that this operation has started don't be surprised that Barcelona's first signing ends up being Messi and then right after we see Inigo Martinez Vitor Roque and also Gundogan but going back to that question and what it did say on this statement what does it mean by Messi playing as a fourth midfielder like what is that idea what could that look like so there's a lot of clubs out there that like to use this type of method like for example at Manchester City Pep Guardiola sometimes in some ways does use Kyle Walker as a central defensive midfielder and acts as a pivot to support the attack we also see sometimes at Arsenal Zinchenko joining the midfield forming a four-man midfield because that is something that Arteta likes to do and then we also see at Barcelona Gavi coming into the midfield from the left wing and he does complete the four-man midfield but with Messi being in this squad what does it mean by Messi becoming the fourth midfielder? So we could see something like this and I'm going to be painting out many different scenarios. I know that some of these might look outrageous to you guys, but again, it's just, you know, it's just speculation. We don't know what Xavi has in plan, but this is what's so fun about it. So going on to plan number one, if Messi does play as a right winger in a 4-3-3 and we see him acting as a fourth midfielder, we're probably going to be shifting into a 3-4-3 formation with Messi and Gavi as interiors and Pedri and Frankie Diong in the double pivot positions. Now there is 
is a slight change. Like for example, instead of Alejandro Valde going up and completing the front three, we see Kunde going up there, but not as high, just to give Messi available in advanced areas in the final third. And I know, I get it. I understand that, you know, why would you sit back Alejandro Valde and have him become the third center back and then push up Jules Kunde? I think that this could work. I think that Kunde has enough firepower in his arsenal to really make something up there in the final third, and especially with Messi. I just don't think that Kunde will be going as high like if we were to see Alejandro Valde going up high in the left back position. It'll be a very different type of change. But the thing is though, is that if you combine Kunde's ability to regain the ball through his tackles and then having Messi continuing to regain possession and being lended the ball by Kunde, you can really build something lethal. Because look, Kunde defensively, you can see that his dribblers tackled, he's in the 87th percentile. Dribblers challenged, he's in the 73 percentile. Percentage of dribblers tackled, he's in the 89th percentile. And then you look up there, right? The amount of tackles he makes in the attacking third. Can you imagine him making those type of tackles in the final third, gaining the ball in a very advanced areas and then having Messi receive the ball and then just let him do his thing? Like that would be crazy to see. That's how you make up for Messi's lack of pressing in advanced areas is to have Kunde right next to him. So he'll be working around these areas here, right here in this red box. That's probably where he is going to be winning the ball and by the help of Jules Kunde, Messi still has also enough firepower in his arsenal to really create something in those areas. We look at the stats here. You can see that he's in the 94th percentile in key passes and then you you know he just kills it here it's like fifa stats 99 and 99 in passes into the final third and passes into the penalty area again in the 99th percentile can you imagine messi making those passes into the final third or into or into the penalty area with Lewandowski sitting up there on top of the box it would just be insane now again going back to what i did say i understand that the sacrifice could be for alejandro balde to just sit deeper and not be in, in very advanced areas even though we do like to see balde make assists and attack the opposition this is probably what could be happening if Messi were to start on the right side and Xavi wants Messi to be the fourth midfielder. But this is also the reason why I would also place Dembele on the left is to provide the balance, is to have the width on the left side and have the compactness on the right side. Now let's go into plan number two or scenario number two. And this is maybe I would say a wild card, which would be for Xavi Hernandez to implement a 4-2-3-1. This is a formation that we have tried out before at Barcelona, surprisingly back in 2020, I believe when Ronald Koeman first took charge, he's like, I'm going to be using a 4 2 3 one because based off the players that I do have, I'm gonna go for a formation like this. Obviously, it did not end up working out, and Kuman in the end, about a two, about two or three months later, he went back to the 4-3-3 formation. But maybe this could work. Maybe if Xavi Hernandez gets this right and he makes the players understand what they need to do in a 4-2-3-1 system, it could really work. So let me explain. I think that if we set up into a 4-2-3-1 on the attack, we go into a shape of a 3-2-5 with Dembele on the right side, Gavi from the left side shifting to the right to become more central, Messi also coming from the very center position, shifting his position more into the right so he can give more space to Gavi and then having Alejandro Balde, like we always do see, go up high and to, and to attack the opposition. And then we have Pedri and Frankie de Jong as receivers. If you guys also wonder like, why am I having Pedri and Frankie as the double pivot? It's because I just think that if you have Pedri and Frankie right in front of someone like Araujo, who is going to be taking the central position of that back line, you create that perfect balance of great shielding with the ball, which is Araujo, and then great ball receivers and ball protectors and great players that has great ball retention, which is Frankie and Pedri. It makes up for the lack of technical quality from Ronald Araujo. And then we can also have Messi and Gavi as ball distributors and making those passes inside the box. And then we have the perfect balance of width between Dembele on the right side and Alejandro Balde on the left side. You can see that in the end, in a 4-2-3-1 system, many of these players would find themselves in very comfortable zones to be in. We have Dembele on the right, where he is prime Dembele, Alejandro Balde being in, being in very advanced areas, having Messi and Gavi as feeders, and then you have Pedri and Frankie just organizing the play. So those are going to be like some sort of ideas that we could see with Messi in this squad. It does change a lot. I understand that many of these scenarios do seem very out of pocket and you're like, like what the hell? Like, come on, Kevin. Like, you really think that Xavi Hernandez is going to be doing this? But who knows? I, again, like we could see a very different Barcelona once Messi does come back next season. And it could be a very successful one because I do think that both of these could work. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.